Hello, everybody. How y'all doing? I am, <laughs> I'm glad to see y'all. I'm glad to be seen by all of you. And I am extremely happy to be able to be back with you after having to almost litigate <laughs> to prove that I had not committed any Facebook violations. I am so happy to be able to come back to you live. I have missed you guys. I appreciate you for watching the reels. I appreciate all of you for supporting the podcast. And I'm hoping that you will join my YouTube channel and go on over to my fan page because I want you all to be able to find me when you're looking for me. And I want to be able to, as a popular song say, give the people what they want. I am in my office today, my little home office, and I have bought a painting to go on the wall back there and uh, I'm gonna put it up because I'll probably be, probably be coming to you from this office a lot because it takes a lot to um, put out music and make plans to be where you all are requesting to see me. And I want you to know that there are many people working with me to bring me to you with as less hassle as possible. And I want you to be able to be in a comfortable environment, a safe environment, a clean environment, somewhere where you can relax. And I also want you to be able to afford to come to the show as well as be able to have a few drinks, dinner, and enjoy yourselves. I know that everybody is a superstar celebrity and everybody thinks that they're worth, uh, you know, $200 ticket prices. I'm a reasonable person. I live in the real world. And I know that that is not necessarily affordable for the average couple, especially the average couple who is trying to pay a mortgage and build wealth for their families. Speaking of build, building wealth, I shared a conversation with you earlier this morning in which a person was letting me know that I might need to address a particular subject with you because they seem to believe that I am an internet influencer. I'm honored to be seen that way. And I do not take it lightly. If I do have a platform, that has 140, 150,000 people watching, then there is a certain amount of responsibility that I have to convey the right information. One of the things that I was told that I needed to address was the number of Black men who create wealth or become wealthy and marry outside of their race. And the question I asked her was, uh, are they marrying a human? And the person said to me, what do you mean? I said, well, you said that they're marrying outside of their race. You know, if they're marrying a human, it's in their race. Well, the focus needs to be on what these men are doing. And so I decided to address that this way. Let me start off by saying that you date and marry who you like and who makes you happy. Your type might not be my type. My type might not be your type. And I was told a long time ago that you don't discredit a person because they don't look like you and don't give a rascal too much credit just because they do. Look at that person's character. Let that be the main reason that you determine whether you want to deal with them or not. Because this epidermis is very thin and skin by itself does not make you kin. The saying is all your skin, all your skin folks ain't kin folks. But my focus today is not on telling black men or men who they should date and marry when they get some money. My focus today is to tell women, <laughs> if you make a certain amount of right decisions in your life and you do the right thing in your life, it won't matter 
which man gets some money and who he decides to marry after he gets his money because you will be positioned to do the same thing. You'll be positioned to date and choose who you want. You will be positioned to where you will be in the company of eligible men, intelligent men, attractive men. You will be positioned so that you can keep yourself as attractive as you possibly can. You will position yourself so that you will have the resources to be mentally, emotionally, spiritually healthy, and financially stable. If you are emotionally, mentally, spiritually healthy and financially stable, you can position yourself to where you can find or be found by a person who is compatible with you regardless of race. So my question today is, we spend a lot of money on hair, makeup, eyelashes, fingernails, outfits, clothes, shoes, and accessories. Sisters, we looking real good. And we wonder that if we are looking so good, why are we being looked over? Let me ask you this question. Does your bag match your outfit and your shoes? Let me get where I can see these comments. Um, you know, we talk about, well, these men get this money and then they go and marry somebody else. Well, let me tell you something. I don't care who marries who. Because a lot of these people, just because they got money, don't mean that that's somebody I want to be married to. I know some men with money who are colossal assholes. I know some regular men who are financially stable. As a matter of fact, they are low-key wealthy, who are great, generous people, and you would never know it. As a matter of fact, what I want y'all to realize is that far too many of us spend too much time looking up the monkey's ass, trying to find out where the circus is going to be and don't realize that the monkey don't run the circus. You over here watching a dressed up monkey and looking over the ringmaster. Before you get upset about what somebody that you think has some money does, the main thing, especially in this day and time, especially in this dating climate, I encourage every woman to secure her own bag. Get your own money. Because I'm going to tell you something. One of the greatest songs that, were, that has ever been sung is Them that's got shall get. Them that's not shall lose. For the Bible says, and it still is news. Mama may have. Papa may have, but God bless the child that's got his own, that's got his own. Do you hear me? Get your own. My family stressed this to me. When you want to be free, it's going to cost you something. Freedom will cost you something. Hello, Alvin Brown. Baby, I, I will get that information to you as soon as I get off this live. Listen to me, honey. Don't worry about what a rich man doing, who he dating. Let me tell you what you need to be worried about. Y'all, the time is out. It's over. That antiquated time where women didn't have opportunities and they had to catch a rich man. Baby, let me tell you something what I realized a long time ago. I realized that catching a rich man ain't the prize. Being a wealthy woman and being the prize was my goal. Now, I didn't accomplish it all at once. I did not know all the things that I needed to know to get started, but I listened. I learned. When you are beginning to secure your life, you got to do just like you walking uh, crossing the street. Stop looking, listen, baby. Stop doing what you're doing. Stop worrying about what a rich man does with his money. Stop worrying about catching a rich man. Stop worrying about dating a rich man because I promise you, you don't even have to be ooh-wee wealthy. If you are a financially stable, self-sufficient woman, you are already going to be positioned to meet the type of men who have a similar work ethic, similar values, similar morals, and of good character. Because let me tell you something. I had an aunt who was ahead of her time 
In the 60s, she was financially stable and self-sufficient, an African-American woman hailing from the deep Jim Crow South. She was born in 1926, and by 1966, at the age of 40, she could financially hold her own anywhere and cover the ground where she stood wherever she went. Her name was Callie Maud Broughton Lomax, and she was my grandmother's older sister. By the time I came along, she had been widowed in her 40s, but she had been no fool with her own coins. And because she had not been a fool with her own coins, she had positioned herself to be in settings, places, and social functions where she could meet men of good character with good work ethic who were entrepreneurial and who were wise and smart with their coins. She married one of them. And so I asked her, I said, you're an attractive woman. Why are you not married? She said, my husband died. I said, and you're not married again? She said, I ain't got no business chasing no man, honey. She said, I got a husband that can take care of me better from the grave than a lot of these men can that are living. And besides, I had my own money before I got married. And because I have my own, I don't have to be out here being a busybody, a desperate donna, or a loose Lucy, because I can sit down right here at this house and take care of everything I need. She said, have your own, honey, because as long as you live, remember this. Ain't nothing you get from a man going to ever be free. It's going to cost you something. And if you get the wrong thing from the wrong man, it might cost you your sanity and your life. So, ladies, this, this message can fit the gentleman, too. Ladies, if you are out here in this world and you want to be positioned to where you can have a good life and enjoy a good life, and possibly end up with a good compatible mate. Let me ask you a question. Y'all looking good. You got your hair laid, face beat, nails done. Everything is picture perfect on you. But I want to know, have you secured your own bag? Do you have your own money? Does your shoes, do your shoes match your outfit? Okay. Does your accessories do your accessories match your shoes and your outfit i i know the answer to that is yes when y'all go through i don't have to ask you does her back does her does her does her outfit match her shoes does she have her outfit and accessories coordinated y'all got all of that but do you have the bag baby does your bag the real bag match your outfit and your shoe. Is you got any money? See, you can't you can't get mad with a man who doesn't buy you the things that you can't afford for yourself. Don't come trying to fool me with a man date me. He got to take me to a five star restaurant. You wasn't eating in no five star restaurant before he met you. How you going to be sitting up here buying a four for four with your own money, but you want filet mignon off of his? You drinking a $2 margarita off of your money, but you want Moet off of his. Get your own bag. If you sitting up somewhere looking like a million dollars before taxes, Excuse me, if you're sitting up somewhere looking like a million dollars before taxes, baby, as my grandmama said, it'll be a crying shame and a scandal before God and the people. If you broke 30 cents from a quarter and if it cost a nickel to take a nap, you'd have to stay up all night. As the preacher out in Texas said, you can't be walking around with a coach or a Michael Kors with a cavity. Priorities, baby. I don't want you to be walking around here like a peacock. Y'all ever seen a peacock? That peacock spread them feathers and baby be the most beautiful thing on the yard. But when you look down at them feet. See, there's a lot of people around here prancing like a peacock. They can show their feathers and look real glamorous, but the foundation that they're standing on ain't pretty. So ladies, 
before you worry about what man is doing what with his money and who he doing it with, quit watching his bag. Get your own bag. Get your own money. And when you out here looking good and fly, I just want to ask you, does your bag match your shoes? Does your bag match your outfit? Do you have some financial stability? Do you have $500 to $1,000 in a right now emergency fund if something happens? If not, work on that. After you get that $500, $1,000 emergency fund put up, then start saving three to six months of your income so that if you had to be out of work for three to six months, that you could sit at the house and meet your basic living expenses without being worried. Because, baby, if you robbing Peter to pay Paul, You ain't, you don't have time to be focusing on who dating and who married. Matter of fact, you don't even need to worry about being dating because you're not dateable. Two halves might make a hole, but it's a mighty deep hole that you'll never dig yourself out of. Two whole people need to come together. Once you get three to six months of your basic living expenses stashed away, while you are doing that, now, and especially once you get that done, you want to start either avalanching or snowballing your debt now. That means if you have five unsecured debts outside of your car and your house and you owe $200 on one, $500 on another one, $1,000 on another one, $2,000 on another one, and maybe $3,500 on the other one, the first thing you need to do is pay that $200 debt off. And if you was paying $25 a month, add that to the $500 debt that you was paying $50 on. Now you're paying that extra $25 on the $500 debt and you knock it out quicker. When you knock it out, now you got $75 a month to add to the $50 or the $75 you was paying on the $1,000 debt. And now you're paying $150 on the $1,000 debt and you'll be through paying for it in about eight months. Once you take that $150 that you paid on the $1,000 debt and you already was paying $150 on the $2,000 debt, you got $300 to go on the $2,000 debt and now you'll knock it out in about six months. Once you take that $300 and you put it on the $3,000 debt with the $200 you was already paying on that, you got $500 on that $3,000 debt and you knock it out in six months. Now you got $500 extra cash to go with the $200 or $300 you was paying on the $3,500 debt. You got $800 to pay on the $3,500 debt and boom, you done knocked it out in about three or four months. Now you got $800 extra money. You don't have any debt except your mortgage and your car note. Now you got $800 to put on your car note that you still owe $15,000 on. You was already paying four dollars on it. So now you got $1,250 to pay on that car note that you owe $15,000 on. Boom. In a year's time, you done knocked the car note out. Now you got $1,250 extra dollars and you got a $1,200 house note. Now, if you want to, you can do one or two things. You can take that $1,200 and put it on your house note and pay your house off in another five years. Or you can simply add $500 to your house note Put the other $700 up in either savings or start investing. And boom, before you know it, you are debt free, accelerating your mortgage and building some wealth. And baby, when you do that, your bag, you got you a bag. Then you can be pretty all day long. And baby, I promise you, when you get set up pretty like that, you ain't got to worry about who getting married. You ain't got to worry about who dating somebody outside they so-called race. You ain't got to worry about none of that, baby, because I promise you, when you get positioned like that, with that little extra money, you're going to be able to have time to take you some vitamins. 
you might be able, if you're not slaved up in debt, you might be able to cut back on working. You might can work 30 hours a week. You might can start your own business as an independent contractor and be at the house a lot of days and have time to exercise, take your vitamins, have time to get you a good night's sleep. Health is wealth, honey. A sick person can't do nothing. You got more time to take care of yourself. And in taking care of yourself, you start eating better. You're not grabbing a, a, a number four or number six with fries on the go. You got time to eat you some fresh vegetables, walk, exercise, drink your water. And after a while, you done drop 20, 30 pounds. You're looking better. You're feeling better. You got that glow about you. You ain't worried. You ain't stressed. You got your bag. And now, with a little extra, catch you some sales, baby. That, that shoe, no pair of shoes and pocketbook that's out right now, they're going to look just as good when they on the clearance rack or when they mark down 50% off. Matter of fact, if your hair right, your skin glowing, and you got your body right, you can go wait and catch an outfit on sale that look better on somebody that's out of shape that they paid a bazillion dollars for. When you get the bag, when you secure your bag, and you got your bag, baby, <laughs> when you really got your bag, your bag will match your shoes, your outfit, your accessories. Your bag will match your life because your bag will build your life. So I want to ask you again, does your bag match your outfit? You can't be Gucci and broke. You can't be bougie and broke. You can't be a bad and broke. You can't be a boss chick and bro, being a boss chick ain't got nothing to do with your outfit. So baby, let me tell you something. Y'all see this $9 sundress I got on? It might have been $10. You are subject to see me out running errands in a $25 sundress and some flip flops and my little basic hoop earrings on any given day. However, when it's time for me to get my glad rags and my road dust on, y'all see how I do. And even then, I feel much better looking like a million bucks because I got it on sale and I got some money in my pocket. Like my grandmama said, you can look at a person and tell you how much they spent. <laughs> but you'll never be able to look at a smart person and tell how much they had sense enough to keep. Does your bag match your outfit? Y'all, design it down and can't pay attention. We're not supposed to be like that. I'm not talking down to you. I want you to understand that you can start right now where you are and change the course of your life with just a little discipline. If you doubt my statement, you once heard me talk about a milk jug millionaire. Baby, you can take a gallon milk jug right now and a roll of quarters and change your life. Well, how you going to do that, Red? Baby, especially those of you who are 16. If you're 16 years old and you listen to this broadcast, if you 18, 21 years old, let me tell you something. You can go get you a gallon jug. Wash it, rinse it out real good, let it dry. When you get paid this week, $20. Don't tell me you ain't got $20. You can mess up $20 and go get you a little, a little meal this evening. Decent meal, not running about $20, you know, just a basic meal. Every week when you get paid, go by the bank and get you a roll of quarters. Two rolls of quarters. Bust that roll of quarters. I know the proper word is burst. Burst that roll of quarters open. Drop it in that milk jug. Cause see, you ain't gonna go down in that milk jug and get them quarters out. Cause that's you know, that ain't no money you can, you know, really spend. It's not worth your time to go in there and dig it out. Drop you twenty dollars worth of quarters in that jug every week and don't mess with it. This time next year, you will have one thousand and forty dollars in that jug. A milk jug holds about a thousand dollars, a little over a thousand dollars worth of quarter, somewhere between a thousand and eleven hundred dollars worth of quarter. Now, if you're 18 years old, 
and you take that $1,000, you know, roll your quarters up and go down to the bank and you tell them people you want to open you an IRA. And you then take $40 to $50 a week and put it in that same IRA every week. Baby, when you get about 45 or 50 years old, whatever your supervisor talking about that day, it, it won't matter because you might not be at work. You will have some money. If you start at 18 with $1,000 and put you $150, $200 in that IRA, you can stop at the age of 27 and never put no more money in there. And by the time you get 40 something, you'll have a nice you have over $40 million. If you do it until you 50, <laughs> you're going to have well over a half a million dollars. You might, at the age of 48 or 55, after doing that for 30-some years, you might be a millionaire. So I heard. Baby, compound interest is some serious. Baby, I thank God every day. When I tell you compound interest in the blood of Jesus, along with the Holy Ghost, will change your whole life, baby. You'll be walking, singing that old song like them people saying, it changed my mind so I could think right. Changed my heart so I could love right. Changed my tongue so I could talk right. Then I said, yes, I found the king of kings. Y'all remember that old song them folks you saying, I kept on searching. Baby, whatever you looking for, kept on searching, searching till I found him. Baby, whatever you looking for, I tell anybody, all that you need to do, find God, good orderly direction, the God within you, the great I am. Find God <laughs> and get you enough discipline and let him guide you in stewardship over your little coins you get. And you just stack them little few coins every day. Baby, find God. You'll find yourself and let him guide you on good stewardship on what to do with your money. And I promise you, baby, if you're a woman, I bet you a, a man will be the last thing you have to worry about. Baby, you get your coins together. Get your life together. Take care of your mental, physical, spiritual health, emotional health. And then you will have time to cultivate and discover your talents, develop your talents. You might find out you're an entrepreneur. Get self-sufficient, honey. Get you something going on for yourself and get to taking care of yourself and looking good. You won't have to worry about who nobody uh dating and marrying. Baby, you'll, you'll, come, you'll go to the store. When you come out the store, one of them might roll out up under your car. You won't be able to go even get gas as soon as you get, get out your car. But hey, how you doing? Let me pump that gas for you. And you know what I found out? It's interesting. The less you need from a man, the more they'll give you. You know why? Because when you meet a man that's got it going on like you, if, if he see you with some diamonds on, he going to buy you some more. Stop telling these men, man got, date me, he got to buy me some diamonds. You weren't wearing none when you met him. I look like a fool telling the man I like some and I ain't got none. As old as I am now. I ain't got to tell no man I like jewelry when he meet me because I'm going to have some on. I already got some. He going to already know. I see she like jewelry because she got some on. I see she like art because I met her at an art museum. I see she like history because I met her at a historical museum. I see she likes wine because I met her at a wine tasting. Oh, I see she likes the opera because I met her at a You don't have to tell a man to take you nowhere. If he met you down at the symphony, he know you like to go to cultured events. 
If he met you on vacation, he know you like to travel. If he meets you in the grocery store and you already can pay your own grocery bill, he know you can take care of yourself and feed yourself. He know you can eat at home. So does your bag match the life you trying to live? Because see, looking rich and ain't got no money. That You, you know. Spirits line up with each other. A lot of times the reason why y'all end up with these huh, dusties and rusties is because y'all dusty and rusty. You out there faking in the game and they are too. And, and like draw like. And if it's a scam artist on here telling y'all to cash out them or send y'all they cash out, don't do that because some people can be stealing with these cash apps. I'm glad to see y'all. I miss y'all. I appreciate y'all. I want you all to know that I appreciate y'all's support of my music. I appreciate some of y'all buying both versions of the music. And I want you to know that I am hoping to use this music as a platform to continue to bring messages like this to you about your health and your wealth. Cause baby, when you got your health in order and you got your paper straight, you don't secure the bag. You ain't got to wait to go to the blues show to party. You can party every day. I, I'm not talking about it in no bad way. You got something to celebrate. You can celebrate your life every day, be grateful every day, and be a blessing to somebody else. And then buy you a ticket to the blues show, the pop show, the jazz show, whatever kind of music you want to listen to. And if you feel like it, you can come see me when I get ready to start doing some show. Because I'm finna get ready. Not I'm getting prepared. I'm saying it like we said in the country. Yes, honey, I'm finna get ready to come to y'all. Memphis, I really enjoyed you all last weekend. Y'all showed me a lot of love. And I will be back. In September, in the fall, I see that other people are asking. And Red want to come. You Red, not hard to work with. I ain't got to cheat you to beat you. You ain't got to cheat me to beat me. We're going to work together. I appreciate y'all for listening to my music, the new song. And I am so excited that some of y'all have gone back and discovered some of the earlier music that I have made. And you are listening to it, to it. And I will be bringing you more. And you all let me know if y'all want me to go live from the living room. I might decide to go live from my living room. Get me a, an accompanist so that I can interact with you all. And just do a little mini concert from right here in the house. And let y'all know how much I appreciate y'all. Remember, ladies. First thing you got to do. You can't demand and you can't get mad about who a man chooses to date. If he don't choose you, you wasn't the one for him. If you was the one for him, he would have choose you. Why you want somebody that don't want you? He got who he want. Position yourself to get with who you want. Don't worry about a man with money. Don't worry about catching a man with money. You start counting now. You start figuring out now. You start planning now to be your own woman with your own money. Secure your own bag. That's why I tell people all the time, let's make sure you get your own bag. Let your bag match the life that you're trying to project. I'm going to recap that. First thing you want to do, make sure you got you at least $500 to $1,000 you can get your hand on in case of emergency. Once you get that, work towards saving three to six months of your basic living expenses. So if anything happened, if you got sick, if you had to take off to take care of a family member, that you could do that without worry. After you do that, start paying down debt. Pay down your smallest debt first. Don't take the extra money and go flogging and parting with it. Put that money towards your next debt. Pay that down. After a while, you got some discretionary income. Can you imagine working on your job and now every month you can save up an extra thousand dollars a month? Baby, do you know with interest in seven years, you're going to be done stacked a hundred thousand dollars? Do you know what your life look like when you got a hundred thousand dollars liquid cash? Baby, please, you can be a millionaire and have a million dollars in assets and still not be able to get your hands on one hundred thousand dollars liquid cash. 
It's a lot of people. They got a million dollars in assets. Their house might be worth seven hundred fifty thousand. Their car might be worth thirty thousand. They might have a four hundred one k and some stuff. But liquid rent now money, baby. When you save up a hundred thousand dollars cash, that's some yes ma'am money. That three to six months living expenses. That's what I call a kiss my ass account. See, when you got that three to six months living expenses put up, that's your kiss my ass account. That means anything that you don't like going on, you can walk away from. It. Somebody ain't treating you right. They're trying to disrespect you, even on your job. Baby, you get tired, you can walk off a job. You can find another job in six months in this, in, in this day and time now. But when you get to where you can save $500 to $1,000 a month for five or six, seven years straight, baby, that's when you're getting that yes ma'am money. That's when you walk into the bank and say, I need to have a cashier's check so I can uh, pay for my vacation. I want to I wanna give my mom a birthday party. I want to take me and my sister on a girl's trip. When you go in there and they ask you for a cashier's check, and they say, well, do you have an account here? When you ask them folks, when they ask you that and you hand them your ID and your debit card or your bank card and they look in there and see that account, they only thing they're going to say, they're going to look at you, Marcia Harris, and say, oh, yes, ma'am, Miss Harris. That's what you call yes, ma'am money right there. That's when you walk in the bank and they want to take you over there in some in, in them little glass rooms so they can do some private banking because you got enough money sitting there in your savings account that you can invest some and they can give you some money for using your money. Uh-huh. See, that's when your bag matching your outfit. So, I love y'all. Y'all been showing me some love, and I want to come to your, your city. I want to be able to not only just be on the stage with you and sing to you, but when I come off the stage, I want to be able to be set up over to where I can interact with you and leave something in that city. Some information about how to preserve and maintain your health and how to build wealth. I hope that you all will stay with me and continue to show me the support that you have. I appreciate you all staying with me when I couldn't be with you on the live, but know now that I am on every platform, my Facebook page, my Facebook profile, but I also want y'all to go over to YouTube. Subscribe to my YouTube channel because I am not about to ever allow myself to be a one-trick pony, and I'm not going to ever hitch all my horses to the same post. So when one thing not acting right, or if I have a problem with a hater here on social media, they think they're going to shut me down, I can go somewhere else. I'm also going to be starting my podcast back up and hopefully be able to come to you on more than one platform in more than one way. We're going somewhere. We're going somewhere with this. Because I want to inspire you to do whatever you can to make sure that you secure and build a good life. Connect the dot is on. Connect the dot is my people. I appreciate everything that they did. They gave me a beautiful video. I use it now. And I want other young ladies to reach out to me. Anything I can tell you that can help you be a uh working towards your goal, individual goal, to be a solid lady with a solid foundation, I'm willing to help you do that. I, I don't. I, I may not be a business expert in your area of business, but I will do this. I'll tell you what I can. And if it's somebody I know that can reach out to help you, I would try to connect you. There are many grazes on here, many grazes from Mississippi. Many grazes was the unit secretary when I worked at the hospital. And I stay good friend with Minnie because I won't be able to get me another good job them tomatoes Minnie got. But I want you all to uh, commit to making sure that you're not out here fronting and putting on the front. Or as people said, putting on airs. Make sure that your bag matches your outfit, your outfit matches your shoes. Make sure that your bag got, matches your life because you have secured your bag. Stephanie Davis, Derek, we most definitely can connect. Inbox me. I inbox you. I want you all to do me a favor. I have been dancing around the music business for a few years, and I have come to realize that there are 
some severe inequities in this business, especially when it comes to women. I do know that when you go to a lot of shows, they have plenty of men on the shows, but no women. And there are some who believe that a woman cannot draw a crowd because when it comes to the promoters, they are concerned about their bottom line. They want to make sure that they have an audience built because their revenues are generated from the ticket buying public. I need for you all to stand up and stand with me and show them that women are just as valuable. They are as skilled and talented as entertainers as men. And I want you all to support these women who are out here performing. I want you to uh, support my homegirls from Alabama, Miss Sassy and Lady T. And I want you to support Karen Wolf, Summer Wolf, Wes Love, uh, all of these ladies, Katrina Hoskins, uh, Cheryl Idas. I want you to support all these ladies. It's enough to go around. It's enough for everybody. And it is my sincerest hope that I stack my coins well enough that I have enough leisure time to attend the shows of these ladies and let you know when your shows are going on. My email address is red, R-E-D-D, velvet at live.com. If you have a show, if you are promoting a show and you want the people to know about it, send me your information. There's 136,000 people on this page that watch my page. And I want to support you because I believe you will support me. The original Miss Brown Sugar. That's right. The lady DJs also, because I'm going to tell you something. It's some lady DJs that help push my music out here. And I, I want you all to know that every DJ is not a man. You got lady DJs out here too. So you all that have events going on, let me know. Um, even if I have an event going on, I'm going to still help you promote your event because my event might be in Alabama. Your event might be in Georgia. I can't be in two places at the same time. I might be for the Alabama people. Keisha had you right. Wet love. Huh? I like wet love. Ladies, I encourage you to do your thing and secure your own bag too because when you're in an industry, when you start not in a business, if you got your own bag, people got to handle you a little bit different. They can't handle you in a kind of way. They can't treat you in a kind of way because you already got your own. You got enough in your bag stacked so that you can sit back and be patient. Latrunda, how you doing? Tell mama I say hello. Tell her that I appreciate her. Latrunda Holland's mother spoke over my life and praying over my life every time I cross her mind. And I believe that her prayers are a huge part of me being as well as I am right now. I want all of you to get you a book a little journal, and write down your goals, write down your dreams, and work toward them. And don't be afraid to reach out and ask somebody for help. We're not all out here piranhas and sharks in the water. Start talking to people. You'd be surprised that there are people out here who are waiting to help you if you are sincerely, um, honestly, tell them what you need. My podcast, Keisha Head, is the Little Red Schoolhouse, and it's on Anchor FM. I went to that when my ability to go live was temporarily suspended. I have some work to do here in this office. I want you all to write your dream down, pray over them, and know that if God puts it in your head, he'll put it in your hand. OK. I don't know why Facebook made you take it down, but we'll talk about that. The song is, you know, it's copyright protected, but I appreciate you for for doing that, for pushing the music. I appreciate you all. I've held you up long enough. I know some of you all are at work, getting ready to get out of work, fight traffic, go home. You got to make dinner, take care of the kids. I appreciate everything that you all are doing. Don't ever let anybody put your fire out. Don't ever, ever let anybody tell you that you can't do anything, that you really 
got your mind set to, and don't let anybody make you feel that you are less than because you're not doing what they're doing. You might not have your own business yet. But what do I tell y'all about yet? Yet means that you eligible too. Y'all stay in touch with me. Let me know what topics y'all want me to talk about, what we need to talk about, family, because right now I want you to know that just as you all have pushed me and motivated me and lifted me up, grab hold of me, baby, because we all going to go up together. All right? If you all know of somebody who has lost their home to a fire or they have had any type of catastrophic event, in their life and somebody's trying to do a fundraiser for them, please let me know. Because just as you have given to me and God has blessed me, I want to be able to bless somebody else. If you're trying to have a fundraiser to help somebody that's been burned out and they done lost everything they have, if you got to pay an artist or a band to come there four five thousand dollars you ain't gonna have nothing left to give the people to help them. So if you are doing something positive to help people, let me know. I want to partner with you, especially if you all are doing anything to help the children, elderly, survivors of sexual and domestic abuse. Let me know. I am also available to come and talk to you all about health and building wealth, and that's going to be my platform. That's the purpose of this music. Once you get people singing and dancing and happy, they'll listen to you a little bit better. I ain't going to just preach to you now. I want y'all to come out, support the music, have a good time. And we live, learn, love, and laugh together. Y'all go on with the rest of y'all day and know that I'm glad to be back live with you. I'm going to do all I can to stay live with you, okay? And y'all be good to yourself. That way we can all be good to each other. I love y'all and I thank y'all so much for everything that you all have done for me.